Hello and welcome back to XYZ. We continue right where we left off in part 1. We just created our camera rig and are now moving on to splitting our tube mesh and controlling it with sound. So now we are going to start and split up our tube mesh and then control it with the sound spectrum node. So we create a new node tree. And in here, I grab a mesh input node. We grab our tube mesh. The outputs I want from uh, the mesh input is the vertex locations and the polygon indices. The mesh and the polygon centers we can disable. And I grab a new loop. And I bring in the vertex locations and polygon indices as new parameters. And I don't bring in uh, the vertex locations and polygon indices as iterators since I want to control the iterations based on our sound spectrum node. So however many values we generate from the sound spectrum node later on, we want to use that as the driving factor for our iteration. So let's create five iterations for now. And in our loop, we want to split apart our polygon in this list. And to do that, we have a slice list node. And now we have to do some math to get to the right start and end points. And I will get a uh, get length node so we know how many polygons we have in our mesh and then with the math i grab a divide and i divide the length of our list by the iterations Then I will add one to the index. And then multiply both of these. And this will be our new end. And just to be safe, we're gonna floor this value. So we are not generating any floating point values but full integers and for the right starting value i will need a new parameter which will just be a single integer and we select the loop input node and then scale uh, scroll down over here and i don't want to expose this as an input since this should only be visible inside the loop and not from the outside so this value cannot be changed this will always be zero unless i reassign a value to it and for that we have the reassign button and here we can reassign the value so every time the loop runs the new value will be reassigned at the end of the loop 
and when the next iteration of the loop runs the previous the previous value will be right in here and we hook that up to the start so the end value of the previous loop will become the starting value of the current iteration of the loop then we have to assemble a mesh out of our separate components and we are still missing the edge indices and right over here in the operators section we have an edges of polygons so this way we get to the edge indices and then we grab a combined mesh node and assemble everything into a mesh. And then we output this mesh from our loop. Let's see what this will actually output. So we hide our tube mesh that comes from Smartchuck. And it doesn't look all that different, so I will grab a get element node from the list section. And this way we should be able to look at the single element of the list and we see right here that our tube is split into five sections since we run our loop for five iterations but this doesn't look all that interesting so in the list section we have a shuffle node and we can shuffle our polygon indices before we slice them and that way it starts to look a lot more interesting. And when we assemble everything, we have our complete tube. So we grab this loop and get it out of the way. Just wrap it into a frame. And the next loop will be used to offset the polygons and scale them slightly and this will be driven by a sound spectrum node and we link that up to our iterations so we split our mesh in exactly as many portions as we generate spectrum points or spectrum values. And we get a new loop. And we get our mesh list in and also a float list for the spectrum. And we output a mesh list. Now we are going to offset the polygons. First the location 
and we use the local axis for that. Then we duplicate it and set it to scale. And we want to scale it to zero. And then use the fall off to control that. Then we grab a map range node. Get in the spectrum value and we duplicate that so we can map the spectrum to different values for our uh, location offset and for the scale offset. And for the scale, we'll use a constant falloff. And for our location offset, we combine a vector and we want to offset the C direction. And when we play that, Our tube is now reacting to our music. And we can still increase the spectrum count and it will always generate or split the meshes in that many uh, separate meshes. What we can also do is get one more offset polygon node to offset the location and scale. And then expose both of these as parameters. That we have now right here. And we just generate a new empty. And we grab a transform input node. And get the empty in here and use its location and scale to drive the polygon offset. So the moment I scale this, I scale the polygons, but also when I offset in C, I can offset the polygons. So I can keyframe this, this object and make uh, our polygons react to that. So at certain points in, in the music track, when, when a drop happens, I can make it, make a keyframe right at that point. So the loop doesn't look as repetitive. So we have certain controller objects that can control the mesh on top of the, of the other offsets we already have. So one more thing now is to generate some vertex colors for our mesh. And for that I create another loop. So we get our mesh list in and also the spectrum. And 
And what we can do here to keep it a bit more tidy is down here with our offset loop. We can go to the spectrum and say use spectrum as output. And what that does is it shows up as an output right here. So we can link it directly to our next loop. So we don't have to link it up from the sound spectrum node and span it uh, across our node tree, which can look uh, quite messy quite fast. So we generate a mesh list output. And then we get a insert vertex color layer node. We grab a map range node. And we combine a color. And then I grab a math node. I subtract one from the iterations. We're going to divide. And we start with a value of one. Divide by the new iterations and then multiply by the index. Get that out of the way. And we feed that value into the green channel. So every separate mesh can have uh, its own unique color this way. And let's look at the vertex color real quick. So we see if what we just made does actually work. So the vertex color channel is actually there, which is already pretty good. This is definitely generating some values. We can see we can change that for that we expose this here so when i reduce the max value we see we have control over how the spectrum is mapped to the vertex colors let's see if the green channel works as well and it seems like it does so every separate mesh that we split off gets its unique uh, vertex color. And 
one thing I like to do is wrap all of this into a master note group. This way we could reuse the effect on multiple different meshes. And if you want to know more about how this works, I have a separate video where I talk uh, just about this topic and how I clean up uh, note trees in animation notes. So I will link that on screen right now. Now with everything wrapped up in a master note group, I can just duplicate the invoke sub program node and empty out the objects. I create an icosphere. I scale it down a bit. And I can just drop it in here. and then create any mesh that we use as the target object. And the moment we get it into the subprogram, it gets overridden by our sliced up icosphere. Since this uh, group will invoke what we created below, and this one the same, but every time with different inputs, depending on what inputs we expose, we can switch them out and just reuse the whole node tree however often we want. And we can head over into our camera rig and just duplicate this. Get our visualizer in here and make it move the same way as the empty. So now the camera focuses perfectly on this object, no matter where we choose to animate it. And we can just increase the size by scaling our base object. And our visualizer will update. What I'd like to do as well is get a solidify modifier. 
on our split up tube. Let's find a good value. And also we can do a little bit of babble. And hide it in the viewport since this hammers the performance quite badly. So it will only show up in render. But we still should make sure it looks good. It's a bit too much for my taste. But Blender gets really slow at this point. So there seems to be something off with the bevel modifier that seems to take some heavy performance hit the moment I activate that. And Blender becomes super laggy. What I'd also like to do is on the solidify is switch the material offset on the rim to one that way we can shade the rim differently than we do the rest since i'd like to use the vertex colors just on the rim because on the whole object it will be too much and it will be too intense but what is still missing is all the shading and we do that right now so let's get in a cube and we scale that by five so it envelops the whole our whole tube and we use that for some volume effect But we will also be able to get away by scaling it in X and C a little bit less. So it barely envelops our tube. That way we can save a little bit on render time since volumetrics will increase the render time and if you render a lot of volumetrics that won't be seen anyway it's just wasted so we head over into the shader editor We delete the principled BSDF and get in a principled volume that we link up to the volume. And let's also drop in a light. Make that a point light. And make sure this isn't in the objects collection. Otherwise, it will be instanced across the scene. And we might also want to 
attach this to the camera look at so the light is animated with that object. And since we are generating a different uh, material index for the rim of our tube, we can create a second material on here. And I will use an emission shader just on the rim. And the rest is just using the generated vertex colors and some color ramps to get the scene to a point that you find visually pleasing so just experiment a little bit with the shader editor in blender and you will get something amazing out of it This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Since we did a lot procedurally, it is rather easy to reuse some of the node setup and just switch out the mesh, for instance. Or just make the loop longer or shorter without having to redo a lot of the keyframes. I hope you had fun watching and recreating this tutorial. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Check the video description for some useful links about animation notes and Spatchock. Thank you so much for your support. Like, share, subscribe, and I would love to see you all next time. Happy blending! Mm -hmm.